Should you know everything? My name is Julian Ross, I'm a film programmer and um, researcher of Japanese cinema and uh, it's not often in my line of work that I get uh, the opportunity to uh, have a conversation with uh, a revered filmmaker such as Naomi Kase, so it's uh, with great pleasure uh, and an honor to be here with you. Um, uh, today, uh, today's conversation is part of Doc Talk, and we have 25 minutes or so. Um, uh, so, uh, perhaps unfortunately for you, there won't be an opportunity to ask questions, uh, but it'll be the privilege of mine for this stage at least. Uh, but if any of you have questions, uh, we have a few minutes after the screening uh, where you can um, ask uh, 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 Mrs. Kawase any questions after the screening. Uh, but for now, it's going to be a conversation between us. Um, so I'd like to start by asking, um, uh, well, in your early documentaries, um, such as those that we've seen today, um, the family is the primary subject matter. Um, although here it's presented as three films in a sort of a trilogy, uh, there are many other uh, works as well that address uh, your family. And I was wondering, um, uh, what was for you um, the trigger uh, f um, in your early career to um, kind of uh, discuss this subject uh, through cinema? Uh, and what, what in cinema uh, provided you that sort of opportunity to um, investigate that theme? Thank you for... <laughs> Thank you for... <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here today and watching uh, at these three films today. It's been a long time for myself as well that I've seen these movies and I've watched the, uh, some parts of it today. And it's been parts of my life that has always been with me. I feel watching your films, um, you use the camera as a way to communicate, um, you know, with your family, uh, both um, uh, your biological um, father, in the case that we see in Embracing, but also with your um, uh, adopted mother, so uh, who you call uh, grandma. Um, you, uh, it feels both uh, you use, or the camera helps you uh, establish this communication, um, is that is that so? In life, uh, there were there are difficult things, and uh, if I wouldn't have had my camera and engage my own life with it, and to be able to share it with you, I might have tried to conceal the difficult parts of my life. And I'm very happy to have been able to film it and go go on with my life with it. It feels like uh, the film also allows, filmmaking also allows you to explore uh, yourself uh, and find out things about yourself. Uh, we're presenting this in the context of the program, Me. Um, so in that sense, uh, of course, it's about your family, but it's of course yourself. Um, is this um, something that you had consciously in mind that you wanted to find out more about yourself through the filmmaking process? You're busy with your daily life. You wake up morning in the morning and you start away right away with the things that you have to do. In your daily life, you have no time to look at yourself. And using a camera was for my way to uh, focus my eyes on that part that you're trying to neglect, you're not busy with in your daily life. I'd like to maybe shift the conversation to film formats. Uh, uh, the first two films that we saw were shot on Super 8, I believe, but also yeah. the last one on uh, video. And I think uh, both media allow you to um, 
access this kind of intimacy. Uh, particularly in Katatsumori, you see uh, uh, your uh, great um, aunt uh, saying you're getting so close. Um, uh, there's that kind of direct intimacy that you um, get through the medium. And it's not often, I think, that we see uh, such work uh, by Super 8 and perhaps earlier video uh, on such a big screen. So how was it for you also to see it on this big screen? I imagine it was presented in kind of smaller environments at first, such as private films. なんか8ミリの特質って例えば私の足の爪の先のつなんかこうゴミまで見えるみたいななんかそういうメディアだと思うんですねでそのことってやっぱりその内面をより深く。The eight millimeter, um, it's a medium uh, that will even show something stuck in, in between, like my nails and front of my uh, feet. So it's very detailed and also it. Like you said, it's very young, it can show intimacy, it makes the picture very personal. So it's being shown on big screens uh, overseas. First time was in, uh, well, in Japan. I was at the uh, Yamagata Festival and there I saw the face of my grandma on a big screen and everyone was watching it. So next, it was in Russia, and again, it, that was overseas. And Japan, Japan is an island, so it really felt that using the 8mm, while it is so personal and so detailed, I could even reach audiences overseas and, and wide public and on big screens as well. So it, it really feels like it is something very special. もの during the filming of Tarachime, the usage of Super 8, 8mm, it began to not being used anymore. So developing the picture became very difficult during filming. And so we've tried, uh, we've, we did techniques like voicing over and it became digital uh, slowly, but still uh, 8mm that is very personal, so like um, baby was holding the films and when the film um, gets affected by light too much, it becomes unusable. But at the same time, it needs light to, to transfer that level of intimacy, that personal, very personal things that I want to have in the film. So it was, uh, well, was, I was thinking about all that while I was working on Tarachime. Wonderful. I mean, it's good to have this conversation, I think, here at the iFilm Museum, where all formats are represented in the archive and presentation. Um, but my next question is um, about the kind of seriality of the works that we see. And I think the topic of family is one that is ever evolving, of course. So it's one that you can't really perhaps, uh, you know, put a finishing point to and move on to the next. And you keep returning to this subject. Um, and I think the title, uh, the Japanese title of embracing um, addresses this. It's almost like an unfinished sentence. I guess the translation would be, uh, be embraced by. Um, but yeah, so my question is whether you can address that idea of seriality in this work. Did you have in mind that you wanted to continue working on this subject from, um, from the beginning and throughout? And also, if you could talk a little bit about the titles of your work, in particular, the Japanese titles, which I find very um, poetic, uh, uh, especially the second one, I think, Katatsumori, perhaps um, is uh, worth elaborating here as well. <laughs> so I would like to start firstly with the uh, titles about embracing Nitsumarete is the Japanese title. The film is about my long journey for a search of my father. And when I was making the film in Nara, which is a quiet place uh, where I live, I actually went through a small city with a bicycle. 
and when I was um, on my bicycle, it was became late in the noon, and I started smelling like dinner being prepared from all the houses. And it gave me a very happy feeling. Like when I was on my bicycle and I could smell it, it felt like I was almost being embraced by all those happinesses in those houses. And I really wanted to transfer that feeling that I was being embraced by happiness. So that is why I chose in that title. Uh, the next, katatsumuri is a snail in Japanese. So with a shell house, because I have never experienced a family with a house, I almost felt like I was like a slug. So without, without the house, without the shell. The tsumori part means um, pretending to be or like. Uh, the meaning to, uh, to be is uh, to be like a snail, as if, if I had a house with a shell. Um, whether I'm making documentaries or even if it's fiction, um, I always return to that theme, family, because it is probably something that is so ungraspable uh, for me and something that I want to explore, that I want to discover. Perhaps, uh, well, many of us uh, here in the Netherlands have had opportunities to see your uh, fiction work uh, as theatrical releases, so perhaps it's a rare opportunity for us uh, to watch your documentaries uh, here in ITFA. Um, so yeah, thanks to ITFA for showing them. But I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the relationship between your approach to documentary and uh, fiction, and in particular, I read uh, that Birth Mother has been screened uh, together with The Morning Forest, uh, which perhaps some of you have seen here in the audience. Uh, so can you, can you elaborate on uh, why you decide to screen those two films together and um, how these two fields of filmmaking, documentary and fiction, blur often in your work? Documentaries and fiction, those are two things that come to me in turns. Like when I make a documentary, I want to complement that afterwards with some fiction in a different film. But after I've made a fiction film, I try, I then want to explore more in documentaries. And by doing that, um, and that is the very reason why I, for example, yeah, wanted to uh, Tarachime and the Morning Forest to be like together. And well, for me, it's like uh, two wheels that while spinning, um, they spin at the same time. And for like a car, it, it needs to be both there. For the past few years, I've been very busy with um, making fiction films, so um, vision, uh, that I've worked on is coming out, and but I've been very much thinking about the reason uh, why I wanted to come here, why I decided to um, come uh, to um, Amsterdam, is that maybe having had a whole busy period of making, working on fiction films, that I wanted to to look at myself and to think again how and why I want to um, use the theme family and working on documentaries again. And well, whilst in the midst of this all, I'm, I've been appointed to work on the official uh, film of the uh, Tokyo Olympic Games of 2020. And so uh, for the next coming years, I'll be working on that. That is going to be also a very personal documentary that I can only make. So I think I have time for one last question. Um, of, of course, um, the Olympics is taking place in Tokyo, but I think um, Nara, uh, uh, your hometown, is of uh, great importance to you. And I wondered if you could speak a little bit about uh, Nara and its importance uh, for your filmmaking. And in particular, I wanted to address a scene uh, in Embracing, the, film, uh, the first film you saw, uh, where, you, where you shoot uh, some trees, um, uh, leaves on some trees, and you say, uh, why do trees sway in the wind? They can feel each other. If I were more um, like nature, I'd feel more comfortable. Um, so I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about you know, nature being almost a character within your film uh, and a way for you to think about yeah, family. 
、はいえー、と奈良は私が生まれて育ったんですが、えー、日本の中で一番古くて、えー、歴史のある場所です世界遺産もたくさんあってお寺も神社もたくさんある、えー、そして自然が神様のようなそんな場所です。Nara,、um, my hometown,、um, which is where I'm born and raised, is a very old place, very historical. A lot of temples, a lot of nature, and、uh, some of them are pointed to cultural heritages. When you're young, when you go through puberty, what happens a lot in Japan is that I want to get out from my from place I'm born, from the countryside, and I want to go to Tokyo, to the big cities. But Nara is a place. That you actually want to go back to. For example, like when I'm thinking about my films, a script, or anything,、um, I always want to be back there and I want to feel the wind, having nature surrounding me and being embraced by the nature, by nature, looking at sunlight between the trees. And it almost feels like that I'm part of nature, and that is exactly. Why I sometimes cannot stop crying、uh, when I'm back there. Well, it's, it's around the world, but Japan, especially,、um, humans have placed themselves、uh, above nature. We're destroying nature, we're using it as we will. But I think we need to have a certain form of gratitude. Towards nature and why Nara is so、um, special for me, I think that is because I feel something, something of a higher power protecting me and embracing me, and that is why Nara makes、uh, is so special for me. So, it's a Nihon no Tamashi, and that is the spirit of Japan, I think. Maybe. But for now, please join me in thanking Director Naomi Kawase. Thank you.